Hello everyone and welcome to another technical overview of Black Square's TBM850. Today we're going to be talking about environmental control systems, something that's been featured in all of Black Square's aircraft and largely ignored in other aircraft. When it comes to flying in the real world, there's far more to being a pilot than simply flying the airplane, and one of those things is keeping you and your passengers comfortable. Aircraft tend to be difficult to keep cool on the ground and experience frigid temperatures while at altitude. They also usually have complicated climate control systems that are a manual affair, requiring deep systems knowledge instead of simply setting a comfortable temperature on a dial. The Black Square aircraft have an LCD screen on the instrument panel that indicates the cabin temperature, both in degrees Fahrenheit and Celsius. They also have two bright LEDs to alert the operator to when the cabin has become uncomfortably hot or cold and to tend to the cabin temperature. These lights are located in the primary field of view of the pilot since it's not currently possible to simulate the feel of the cabin temperature through your computer screen. That doesn't mean the screens in your computer screen can't feel the temperature though. The CRT screens in this aircraft will take a noticeably longer time to warm up when the cabin temperature is cold. When starting a flight out in the hot sun, the cabin temperature of the aircraft will be far warmer than the outside ambient temperature due to solar heating. The easiest way to start cooling off the aircraft before even turning on any power is just to open the doors. The front door is smaller, so it will have a lesser effect than the back door, and both open together will provide maximum cooling. Alternatively, once the aircraft is supplied with power, the cabin temperature can be equalized with the outside ambient air temperature by placing the air conditioning switch in the fan-only position. If the cabin temperature is very hot, placing the fan flow switch in the auto position will increase the speed of the fan, thus increasing the speed of temperature equalization. In this mode, there is neither active heating or cooling, so the temperature select knob will have no effect. Once the engine is running and the bleed switch is on, we can cool down the cabin actively with the air conditioner. Place the air conditioning switch in the on position and select your desired cabin temperature with the temperature select knob. Keep in mind that vapor cycle cooling systems have their limits and this one may not be able to cool the cabin to your desired temperature during extremely hot conditions. When you begin climbing, you'll lose the need for your air conditioner quickly as the ambient temperature drops. When this happens, you can place the air conditioning switch back in the fan only position. The vapor cycle cooling system will also be disabled for you as a matter of load shedding, either when operating without a generator or ground power unit, when operating on the standby generator, or when either the airframe de-ice or the propeller de-ice switches are in the on position. As should go without saying in a black square aircraft, any aspect of the temperature control system we've discussed already can fail. Once you've entered those frigid altitudes, hot air is supplied for the cabin via the engine bleed system. The hot air passes through a heat exchanger, the cooling turbine, and a water separator before being admitted into the cabin. The bleed air switch off position acts as a shutoff valve in case of emergencies. Normal operations are conducted with the switch in the auto position. If you're operating at very high altitudes or cold conditions, the temperature controller may not be able to maintain your desired cabin temperature. If this happens, place the bleed air switch in the high position until you descend into warmer air. Lastly, a control referred to as the air flow selector on the bottom right of the ECS panel is capable of redirecting hot air towards the windshield to function as a defroster. In the simulation, this will act as a standby windshield de-ice, although less effective than the electric de-ice. Now let's talk about the pressurization system. As a measure of complexity, the Black Square TBM850 has 10 failures associated with just cabin pressurization. Like most aircraft pressurization systems, this one consists of a series of passively controlled inlet and outlet valves that meter 
pressurized engine bleed air to achieve a certain cabin pressure altitude. You interact with this system via a cabin altitude selector and rate knob. The cabin pressure altitude selector consists of two scales and a single pointer. The outside scale is the desired cabin pressure altitude in thousands of feet. The current cabin pressure altitude is indicated on the gauge below by the short ALT needle and the inside scale. The inside scale of the cabin altitude selector is the maximum outside pressure altitude where the simultaneously indicated cabin pressure altitude can be maintained. This relationship is dictated by the maximum cabin pressure differential. This pressure differential is indicated on the gauge below by the long PSI needle and the outside scale. The maximum pressure differential is the thin red line at 6.2 PSI. If the aircraft climbs above this maximum indicated pressure altitude, thus increasing the cabin pressure differential, a vacuum-operated safety valve will open, increasing the cabin altitude and decreasing the differential pressure. The activation of the safety valve can be uncomfortable for passengers and crew. Therefore, it's important to adjust the desired cabin altitude after receiving a climb instruction. The cabin rate knob with the white arrow can be used to select the maximum cabin climb or descent rate during normal operation. All the way counterclockwise is only 150 feet per minute, while all the way clockwise is 2,000 feet per minute. This rate can be monitored on the gauge below on the left-hand scale that looks like a vertical speed needle, because technically, it is one. A comfortable rate is around 700 feet per minute when the white needle is at the 10 o'clock position. The maximum descent rate can also be increased by moving the bleed air switch into the high position. The cabin should automatically depressurize as soon as weight is placed on the wheels during landing. However, since everything can fail in a black square aircraft, if the cabin pressure differential is not zero after landing, the red guarded dump switch can be used in emergencies to release the cabin pressure. Below the co-pilot's yoke is one more control that can have an inadvertent effect on your cabin pressurization, and that's the emergency ram air pull handle. When this handle is pulled out, raw ram air is admitted into the cabin without pressurization. Therefore, if the handle remains out during the flight, it will be impossible to pressurize the cabin. Several indications on the annunciator panel pertain to the pressurization system, and they're all right in a row. Bleed temp and bleed off both lead to a loss of temperature control and pressurization. Cab press indicates that the cabin pressure altitude is above 10,000 feet, or the cabin pressure differential is above 6.2 psi. The red door indicator tells us that either a door is open or not latched correctly. Latching failures are also evident on the doors themselves, by red stripes being visible in the latching indicators instead of green. If a door is open, we obviously can't pressurize, but if a door is not latched correctly, we may have a slow depressurization or not be able to reach our desired cabin pressure altitude. Make sure that the doors are latched properly before takeoff. Related to the environmental controls of the aircraft is the use of emergency oxygen when the cabin altitude becomes dangerously high. On the ceiling of the aircraft is an oxygen pressure gauge and two switches that control valves. The forwardmost switch can be considered the oxygen master switch that permits the flow of oxygen to anyone inside the aircraft. With this switch in the on position, the crew members have access to their pressure demand type quick donning masks, which are located on the opposite side of the aircraft from the crew member. The pilot's mask is above the co-pilot's seat. In this position, the passenger's constant flow masks are also armed and will deploy when the cabin reaches approximately 14,000 feet. Should the passenger masks not deploy automatically, the second switch on the overhead panel can be used to deploy them manually. In both cases, the oxygen will be consumed at a rate appropriate to your pressure altitude and the amount of 
biomass in each seat as defined in your payload settings. This particular aircraft has an additional opportunity for operator error, indicated by the oxygen annunciator light. When this light illuminates, it means that either there's no oxygen cylinder present at all, or the oxygen isolation valve is in the off position. This valve is only accessible via the exterior of the aircraft. Should an emergency occur and you deplete your oxygen on a flight, it can be refilled on the first of the two failure pages on the weather radar display. For even more information on the environmental control systems, see the 100-page manual that comes with the product. I hope you enjoyed the minutia of Black Square's TBM 850 and its environmental control systems, and you're looking forward to having some high-flying adventures of your own soon. Until next time, I will see you in the next video.